This $3,000 digital camera doesn't make any sense, and yet it exists. Just that fact alone was enough to persuade me to search endlessly online for a copy. I ended up paying $100 for mine, which compared to $3,000 sounds like a pretty good deal. But as you'll soon see, in terms of value per dollar is really pushing it. But I just had to take a stab at what has to be one of the most odd camera system decisions ever made by a large camera manufacturer. I first discovered this camera when digging into dead lens mounts, as one does in their spare time. And one in particular stood out to me as a mount I had never heard of. That's the Minolta V mount or Vectus mount. That's these beige branded lenses that Minolta made for their APS film cameras. APS is a film format smaller than 35 millimeters. And if you've never heard of it, you're not alone. <laughs> Most people haven't because it never took off to the mainstream. When they released it, it was supposed to be the next big thing in film photography, but it never really went anywhere. And as of 2012, that film format was stopped being produced altogether, which rendered the cameras useless and people are just trying to get rid of them. On top of that, these lenses are really bad for adapting to mirrorless cameras. There's no manual aperture on them and most can't be focused manually anyway, if not all of them. So they don't really work to adapt. The film format is dead. And that leaves all these Minolta Vectus lenses rendered junk today, except for one digital camera they were designed to work with, which is probably still junk, but I bought it anyway. This is the Minolta Damage RD3000 released in 1999, the only digital camera to use the Minolta V-mount. The first and the last, unfortunately, because this camera totally flopped. Not many of them were ever produced and the ones that were didn't sell very well. And it's at this point in the video that I wanna show you some really cool pictures I took with this camera, um, except, well, you'll see. There's actually quite a lot I like about the image characteristics, which I'll get to in a minute, but obviously there's a major problem. And in order to understand this problem, you first have to understand some crazy things that are going on under the hood of this cool camera. Minolta put not one, but two CCD sensors inside this camera side by side to effectively increase the sensor size and resolution. The photo is then put together as one image in the camera. So to the end user, it's all the same. To do this, there's a split prism of sorts inside the camera to direct the light to each sensor. Even more clever are the built-in focal reducers which reduce the crop factor to 1.5x, the same as an APS-C size sensor, although even combined, these two sensors are much smaller than that. And that is a point in favor of the camera and maybe why it's also so hunking huge, but that made these lenses a lot more viable since you wouldn't have to deal with a crazy two or three or four times crop factor on already not super wide lenses. Anyway, in the process of these prisms and mirrors, one of them is clearly not quite right and half of my image ends up dark. It's a really tricky problem to solve and in my internet searching, I have not found a lot of information about it or this camera enough to fix it. So if you have any ideas of what might have caused this or how to fix it, please let me know. Because despite all odds, I have grown quite fond of this little guy, this big guy really big guy. The images have a really nice film-like look to them, and I know that that term is overused and doesn't really mean anything, but hear me out. I think it's a combination of the older CCD sensors and their color output. It's on the cool side of things like some Fujifilm film I know. Then a lot of it I think comes down to the lenses, which at least of the three I have are not very good at all. And those imperfections combined with the older sensors really make the images I take with this camera look like they were taken in a completely different era. Like I'm taking pictures of my children that look like pictures that were taken of me as a child on a film camera, which is kind of cool. The camera itself, besides its abnormal shape and size, weird mount and dual sensor and mirror system, is pretty normal. You have manual and priority modes, which you switch by holding down a button and then spinning the only control dial on the camera here in the front. From there, you can also switch the white balance, the quality, the drive modes, exposure compensation, and that's about it for this camera. There's hardly anything in the menu system. But for such an expensive camera, the shutter button is surprisingly dull and uninspiring. It feels super plasticky, but the shutter sound makes up for it and sounds really cool. 
The camera takes double A batteries and a CF card, which is cool because a lot of these really old cameras are getting harder and harder to use because of obscure memory formats or obscure batteries that aren't made anymore. So there's some more points for this camera. But back to the main reason I bought this camera and that's these Vectus lenses. They are super cheap nowadays because people can't use them for anything. People are giving these away on eBay. The one exception to that is a 17 millimeter lens that was released when this camera was released as well, which is just such an odd move by Minolta. It's kind of a mystery to me why Minolta didn't rework this camera to be more like the RD175, which used the Minolta A mount, which already had loads of professional grade glass out there, but instead used the Vectus mount, which had a handful of not super professional lenses. And that A mount did continue because when Minolta sold it to Sony, Sony then continued that A mount into their DSLRs until recently when they cut off their DSLRs. A full set of a working camera and most of the lenses is running about 700 bucks on eBay. And I tried to talk the seller down on this listing to even lower because there is no way, as much as I think this camera is cool, I'm gonna pay $700 for it, uh, but they won't budge. That listing hasn't gone down. By the way, it's been up there for months. And my bet is it'll stay there because I cannot imagine anyone buying this whole set for that much except as just a fun collector's item. And really the sad tale of this camera is that it was doomed from the start. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the digital camera boom was moving so fast that there were several cameras that by the time they were released were already behind the time. The R&D that it took to get out a working prototype and then get it out there and released um, if you weren't quite fast enough and you didn't bet on exactly the right technologies, you ended up releasing a camera that was obsolete by the time you released it. And in many ways, that is kind of what this camera was. This is also what doomed another early digital camera that I have right behind me back there, which I'm really excited to talk about. The uh, supporters of my channel already know about this camera and it's going to be a cool one. If you liked this old CCD camera, but are more interested in a way more practical one, for less money, then check out this video I made. I'll see you over there, and until next time, happy snapping.